orden. Wilders hovedbudskab er at stoppe indvandringen af muslimer til Europa. I really believe that it's five minutes to 12 when it comes to the danger of the islamization of our continent, of Europe, indeed of the West. Now, welcome, Gerd Wilders. Uh, as we just heard one year ago, you said in an interview with, with a colleague of mine, it's five minutes to 12 when it comes to the Islamization of the continent. Tell me first shortly, what's the time now? It's still uh, a few minutes to 12, maybe four minutes to 12, uh, because the Islamization is continuing. Um, only in my country we had 140,000 immigrants uh, last year. Uh, but there's also good news. Mm -hmm. uh, parties like my party are getting stronger. Uh, my party uh, won, uh, became second uh, largest of, uh, party of the Netherlands in the European elections last year. Um, um, so um, there is also a lot amount of people, normal people, uh, that fear the Islamization mm. and really want the government to act. So a lot of act. people are trying to stop the clock going. Well, more people, uh, mm. not a majority yet, but mm -hmm. more people than ever um, are supporting parties like mm. mine that want to fight for freedom and stop the Islamization of our societies. You've compared the Islamization with a tsunami. Why is that? Well, because the amount of the influx of both the mass immigration from Islamic countries and also the demography, the demographical changes, um, are enormously. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, we have in the Netherlands uh, today, we have one million people from Islamic background, and as were not even hundred, um, mm -hmm. um, uh, some decades, a hundred years ago. So it's really went um, very fast, very quick, and nobody really thought unless unlike the last few years, what, really, what the changes meant. Mm. And the but public, many, and the public is of, dissatisfied with it. But how many of this million people represents to you a problem? I have nothing against the people. Um, I have nothing against Muslims. Let me make it very clear. I even acknowledge the fact that the majority of the Muslims in Denmark and Holland and Europe are law-abiding people. But still, I propose a ban of the immigration from Muslim countries because I know that the more Islam, the more the Islamic ideology, which doesn't want to assimilate or integrate, but wants to um, submit and to dominate a society, the more they come, the stronger it becomes, um, the less freedom um, we will get, and the, um, well, the less pleasant uh, the country, our countries will become. If we take a, an overview over the whole of Europe, uh, yeah. 25 million Muslims are living around uh, Europe. Uh, uh, how many are we talking about uh, being a problem here? Yes. Well, in the whole of Europe, if you look besides the European Union, the numbers are higher. It's 50 million yeah. uh, Muslims uh, today. And it will problem? be doubled in a few decades' um, um, time. In the year 2025, one out of three children born in Europe will be um, born out of uh, Muslim uh, parents. So, um, with the immigration um, and the demography, it's going very fast. And once again, I'm not saying that those people are problems. I have nothing against people, against Muslims, but the but stronger... But religion, that's well, a problem. Yes, well, I, I see it not so much as a religion, I see it more as a totalitarian ideology for Islam really um, um, wants to submit, wants to dominate our societies, doesn't want to be part of our society like Christianity or Judaism, which are originally part of our societies. So if this becomes stronger, you know that Islam, you know that the Quran, you know that Sharia, Sharia law, which is part of the Islam, has nothing to do with freedom has nothing to do with um, um, the rule of law. Sharia means that uh, women, um, that homosexuals, that everybody who is not um, a Muslim but still, will pay a very but high but still, price. Mr. Willis, I'm asking, who's yeah. the problem here? Well, um, um, the, uh, not only the people. Uh, like I said, we have nothing against the people. We have something against the ideology. Mm. The problem but, but, but are some, the... But some people represent this ideology. Of course, yeah. um, uh, people how, how tend to believe talk, in it. And the biggest, the biggest problem uh, we face today is not only the emigration from Muslim countries and the demography, mm -hmm. but also our weak leaders, the leaders of our, um, of our countries, like the Netherlands and other countries. But again, what's the number people, of people we're talking about here? Well, an um, enormous uh, amount of people. Like I said, 50 million people um, are living in Europe today. And I assure you that even though the majority of the people in our societies today are non-violent, are not terroristic, are not uh, criminals, mm. that the sooner, the sooner the numbers are um, increasing, if a society will um, stay uh, 20, 30, 40 mm. percent out of Muslims, an entire society will change. It will cost us our freedom. You already see it uh, today, um, even here in Denmark. I believe that in the city of Copenhagen a few years ago I saw a report that 80 percent of the crimes were committed by immigrants, uh, most of them Muslim. It's the same. Um, in the Netherlands. So you see, unfortunately, a change for the worse when it comes to crime, when it comes to intolerance, when it comes to the beating of gays 
um, and for instance, the city of, uh, of Amsterdam, when it comes to the governments that are giving in and that are again, stopping the freedom again, sorry, of, of speech I'm in sorry our to societies. Sorry to interrupt you, yes. but, but, but how many are we talking about here? How many represent this problem? Well, a lot. Um, there was um, uh, many surveys. What's, what's a lot from well, your point of view? Millions. Um, tens of millions. There, were, there was a survey. What about this tens now, let of me, millions? Uh, please, you ask me a question. I want to finish my answer. Um, in the Netherlands, there was a survey that uh, one out of three um, uh, Muslim youth wanted to install um, Sharia. In the United Kingdom, we had a survey that 30-40% um, of the uh, Muslim students there said that they uh, want to get rid of democracy, also want to install uh, the caliphate, want to install the Sharia. You see the same numbers in Sweden and, and even in your own country, Denmark. You see that it's still a minority, but a huge amount of Muslims really want a different society than the democratical society that we have today. And as long as they become, uh, are not a minority, but as soon as they start becoming stronger, um, uh, they will, um, I'm sure, change their tune and we, it will be too late to mm -hmm. fight back. And if, if you were the one to, des to decide, then, yes. then what should happen to all these people, to these millions of yes. Muslims? Well, the people are already in our societies and don't want to um, um, go back to their countries on a voluntary basis. I have a very clear message. Mm. If you abide by our laws, if you abide by our values, by our rule of law, by our constitution, you are very welcome to stay and you are equal as anybody else. And mm. we will even help you. How many, by, how many, even, how many even do you expect could abide but, this? Yes, but let me f please finish my question. So if you abide by all the laws and values, you are welcome to stay. But if you don't, if you commit a crime, if you start thinking about jihad or sharia, then it's very clear we will mm. send you away, we will send you packing, we will strip you of the Dutch or Danish nationality, and we will send you away. So it's a red line, abide by the rules, and you are welcome to stay. And if you don't, we will send you away the same day. And at the same time, we want to stop of the um, immigration from Muslim countries, um, 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 from any Muslim countries mm. to our societies. How many do you expect to abide the law? Well, unfortunately, uh, you will see, um, even here in uh, your country, Denmark, 70% uh, of the population in your presence consists of people from Islamic background. In Holland, mm. it's unfortunately not so much different. You mm. see all over Europe, if you look at the statistics, so it's not an opinion, I'm talking about facts, mm. that if you look at the crime rates, that um, uh, people um, from uh, Morocco, um, Algeria, other countries are unfortunately, I wish it was different, But what, what, what would you do to all these people? What would you do to all these people? Well, if I mean, they, we're talking about millions of people. Uh, are you going to send them out yes. of Europe? Uh, yes, well, if, they, if they abide, uh, by our laws, if they don't commit crimes, if they don't start acting like Sharia or um, Jihad, they are once again welcome to stay and we will even help them to integrate by giving their uh, money for education whatsoever. But if they don't, there's w only one solution and that is to send them away out of our countries immediately. And this is the only way and the only language, unfortunately, that is needed. If it was not a few minutes to 12, but a few minutes to 9 p.m., we could decide otherwise but we cannot afford to do so anymore. We have been talking too long. Now we have to start acting uh, in a tough way. And again, the number? What's the, what's the well, number? like I said, if I talk about the numbers, which 70% of the prisons, uh, many people wanting um, to implement uh, Sharia or the Caliphate, they are denouncing democracy. Um, you are talking about millions now. And unfortunately, it will increase if we don't stop the immigration. And if we don't start acting against people who act against our uh, free societies and our values and uh, rule of law. Kate Wilders, thank you very much for joining us thank here. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Og fortsættelse følger på Christiansborg i morgen, nemlig når Gerd Wilders, som nævnt, er blandt talerne på en konference om ytringsfrihed.